In this video, we'll be looking at a March question paper dealing with equations for grade 11 maths. Now, even if you're not studying for your March question paper, your term one exam, whether you're studying for your June exam or your November exam, or if you're in grade 12, you can use this video. So these are the questions that we'll be tackling. Let's jump right in. So our first one, let me just rewrite it so that you can see it a little bit better. X squared minus 2x equals 8. Now, I hope you realize that as soon as you see the x squared over here, you know that it is a quadratic equation. And you need to remember the first step, which is to get it into standard form. So make it equal to 0. That's our first step. So the inverse of plus 8 is minus 8. Make it equal to 0. And then also remember that it must be in descending powers of x. So this is x to the power of 2, then x to the power of 1, and then no x of here or x to the power of 0. Then once you've gotten it into standard form, you need to factorize this expression over here. It's a trinomial. So let's quickly factorize it. You need to remember your factorizing method. So this is 1 times 8 or 2 times 4. Remember the goal is to make a negative 2. So if I play around with the products, with the factors, I will see that if I use a negative 4 and a positive 2, that will get me a negative 2. That's very, very important just to play around with it. And you can see negative 4 multiplied by positive 2 gets me negative 8, which is our constant over there. And if you add or subtract, it gets me the coefficient of x. So we factorize it. So it's x minus 4. That's my first bracket. And then x plus 2. That is my second bracket equal to 0. Then you say x minus 4 is equal to 0 or x plus 2 is equal to 0. So therefore, my two solutions, x is equal to 4 or x is equal to negative 2. Two answers because we are dealing with a quadratic equation. So we get a mark for putting it in standard form, a mark for factorizing, and one mark for both of the solutions being correct. For this equation, the instructions obviously still solve for x, but what is given here in brackets is a massive hint as to how you approach this question. They want the answer correct to two decimal places. So you need to use the quadratic formula, and because it says two decimal places, we know we are going to end up using the quadratic formula. You can't factorize this trinomial in any other way. So Let's do it. Let's use a quadratic formula. You need to know this quadratic formula. And then let me just write the question for you a little bit bigger so you can see it. Where does the a, the b, and the c come from? Remember, the coefficient of the squared term, that is my value for a. The coefficient for the x term, negative 1, that is my b. It has to be negative 1. Then the constant, negative 2, that is my value for c. Now we need to substitute in, and when you substitute in, you must use brackets. You have to have to use your brackets when you sub in. So negative 1, there we go, sub it in properly. Now we're typing this into our calculator to get the two different solutions. You get a mark for showing the substitution. So please make sure you actually show it on paper. To get the one solution in our calculator, we are going to plug in the plus sign over there. Plus, so that must be a plus. And then we get that in third form. But remember, the question doesn't want it in third form. They say correct to two decimal places, so we need to give it in decimal form. So our answer will be 0, 84. Round it off to two decimal places. Then to get the second answer, you change that to a minus on your calculator. And we get negative 0, 84. Five, nine. You get one mark for each correct solution. Now, a lot of students struggle with this question. This is an inequality. You can see over here, we don't have an equal sign. We have our greater than or equal to sign. And this is actually a quadratic inequality. So what do we do for a quadratic inequality? Well, we need to get it into standard form. So we need to distribute the x into the bracket and do the inverse operation of plus 6 over here. So let's do it. So we're going to go, let me just rewrite it bigger so you can see nicely. We're going to distribute the x into the bracket here, getting x squared minus x bigger than or equal to 6. Then this 
is plus six. The inverse operation would be minus six. And then we've gotten it into standard form. It's equal to zero. Remember also the de descending powers of x. Then what we do next is you can see that this is a trinomial. We need to factorize this trinomial. So you do your method for factorizing. This is mine over here. And as you can see in my brackets, I got x minus 3 and x plus 2. There we go. Factorize that. And then after this, we use each bracket to get our CVs, our critical values. Very, very important. Now, how do we get our critical values? You take each bracket and pretend that you are going to make it equal to zero. So if I were to take x minus 3 and make it equal to 0, x would be positive 3. That's my one critical value. And then x plus 2, if I were to make that bracket equal to 0, I would get x is equal to negative 2. That is my other critical value. Now, I use my critical values in order to help me draw my parabola. You know that this represents a parabola, the equation. So you put the smaller critical value here, negative 2, and then 3. It's like a number line. The smaller value goes on the left. Then we can see that this is a happy parabola. The coefficient of my x squared is a positive number. So happy, smiley face parabola. I hope you can see the smiley face over there. And then, remember, your critical values must be plotted on your parabola. Now we're going to look at which part of the parabola do I care about in this quadratic inequality. So it says x squared minus x minus 6 must be bigger than or equal to 0. So bigger than or equal to 0, you read it left to right. So bigger than or equal to 0, that is positive values for y. So remember, we pretend that there's a y-axis here. These would be positive values for y. And down here, these would be negative values for y. So because I'm dealing with greater than or equal to zero, I care about the positive values for y, which means that I care about these parts of the parabola, everything above the x-axis, all the positive y values. And I draw in my arrows over here to indicate that these are the x values that I care about. All the x values going that way and all the x values going that way. Because you know we can extend the arms of the parabola there to infinity. So I care about all those x values and all of those x values. And because I have two separate arms of the parabola, I know that my answer is going to contain two separate little inequalities. This one, so this is where all the x values must be less than negative 2. So if I were to go this way, it'd be negative 3, negative 4, and so on. So x must be smaller than or equal to negative 2, because going that way is less than negative 2, negative values. And then if you take a look at the other arm, okay, you say, or it has to be or. If you take a look at the other arm, those are all the x values bigger than 3. So if you keep going this way, you'd get more positive values. So x must be bigger than or equal to 3. Very, very important that our critical values are used here in my answers. Now, remember, you must place it all in the middle. And how do you know that these must be greater than or equal to or smaller than or equal to? So why must it be equal to? because of the question. So basically, it can't be less than two or it can't be just greater than three. It must include the equal to because the question includes the equal to. That is super, super, super important to remember. If you don't do it that way, you're gonna get it wrong. Some teachers also represent the critical values on a number line like this. So all the X values, including, that's why it's a solid dot, negative two and less than negative two and including three and bigger than three. But this that I'm circling, this must be your answer. So we will be getting one mark for putting it into standard form. And then after that, your second mark will come from the critical value. So three and negative two, and you'll get one mark each for your answers. Our next sum that we'll be looking at is a square root equation or a root equation. And our first step is to isolate the root. So get it by itself. So we'll be doing inverse operations. The inverse of plus two is going to be minus two. So we minus two from both sides of the equations. And then we have isolated our roots on that side of the equation. Then our second step is to square 
both sides of the equation and to show that you are squaring both sides of the equation. And remember, when we square both sides of the equa equation, we're squaring the entire left-hand side and the entire right-hand side, not squaring things individually. Then when you square a square root, I hope you know you are just left with the inside. So x plus one is left over. And then this, if you're going to forget how to do this correctly, I recommend you write out the bracket twice to see that you are doing a binomial squared. You do your FOIL method. You can also use your shortcut, but do it properly. So essentially what we're doing is we're saying one times one, which is one. One multiplied by negative two is negative two x. Negative two x multiplied by one, negative two x. Negative two x multiplied by negative two x is positive four x squared. And then over here we've got x plus one. And then as soon as I see my x squares, I know I'm dealing with a quadratic equation and I need to get it into standard form. So make it equal to zero. I'm going to say four x squared, then the negative two x and the negative two x, that remains on the right hand side and then the positive x becomes negative x okay because we do inverse operations there with the x and then the plus one stays there and then we do the inverse operation of plus one which becomes minus one and if we simplify that we get 4x squared minus 5x and the plus one and the minus one cancel make it equal to zero it's now in standard form now we can factorize this. So we take out our x, we left with 4x minus 5. And then we've successfully factorized. So therefore x is equal to 0, make that piece equal to 0, or 4x minus 5 is equal to 0. The inverse operation of minus 5 is plus 5, and the inverse operation of multiply by 4 is divide by 4. Now we have to have to, because we're dealing with square roots equations, check our solutions. So what I mean by that is I'm just going to rewrite this over here. 2x plus the root of x plus 1 equals 1. So we need to take our solutions, our answers for x. So for example, x is equal to 0. And we need to substitute it in the place of x on the left-hand side and see if it equals the right-hand side to see if the solution is valid. So in the place of x, I'm going to put zero. You can type it into your calculator and you don't actually have to show this on paper. You can just do it on your calculator. I'm just showing you. Here we get one on the left-hand side, which is equal to one on the right-hand side. So x is a valid solution. Then we're going to do it again, but in the place of x, we are now going to substitute five over four. So in the place of x, put 5 over 4. Again, in the place of x, put 5 over 4. You can do this on your calculator. Type the whole thing in. And you will get, if you do it correctly, you should get the left-hand side is equal to 4, but the right-hand side is equal to 1. That doesn't make sense. So therefore, we reject that solution. It's not a valid solution. And you have to indicate that you are not accepting that solution, that x does not equal to 5 over 4. Right. So where do you get your marks? For isolating the root, for squaring both sides and for showing it on paper. And then you get a mark for putting it into standard form over here. Then we get a mark for actually giving the two solutions and then for showing that we are rejecting our solution. Our question over here is now our simultaneous equation. So we're solving for x and y. We've got two equations over here. So our first step is to pick one of the equations. I'm going to pick this one over here and we are going to isolate one of our variables. So we choose one to make the subject of the formula. So I'm going to make x the subject of the formula. So let's quickly x minus y minus three equals zero. Okay, so x is the subject of the formula. The inverse of minus y is plus y. The inverse of minus 3 is plus 3. And there we go. We've isolated x. That's my first equation. The second equation, I just simply rewrite over there. And then what we are now going to do is we are going to substitute or sub our first equation into our second equation. So my first equation says x is equal to y plus 3. So everywhere where you see an x in the second equation, we are going to substitute y plus 3. So let's do it. In brackets, y plus 3 squared, because it was x squared, minus 3y squared, minus 13. Now, we remember we put that 
y plus 3 in the place of x. Okay, now we need to simplify this. Do this properly, please. So if you're going to forget how to do this, you can use a shortcut method. But if you're going to forget, just write it out twice and we do the FOIL method. So the shortcut method would be square the first term. It would be y squared, square the last term. So 3 squared is 9. Then multiply the 2 together, 3y, and multiply that by 2. So 6y. Then what we do is we carry the negative 3y squared down and we carry the 13 down. Now, I'm seeing y squares, so I know I'm going to have a quadratic equation. I'm going to take the y's to the right-hand side, the y squares to the right-hand side, everything to the right-hand side, actually, to avoid a negative y. So it's going to be, um, what I'll end up doing is I'll take the negative 3y squared over, inverse would be plus 3y squared. This is a positive y squared. It's going to be negative y squared. This is a plus 6y. It's going to be negative 6y. And then I've got plus 9. Um, well, the 13 stays there and the plus 9 becomes negative 9. And then if I simplify that, I end up getting the following, right? So 2y squared minus 6y plus 4. But as you know, with equations, I can actually simplify that further. I can get it into its simplest form. I can divide everything by 2 to help me do a trinomial, everything must be divided by 2, which means I'll end up getting, so still 0 on the left-hand side, then I'll get y squared minus 3y plus 2. Another way to do this is you could have maybe taken out 2 as a highest common factor, and you would be left with that, and then you divide both sides of the equation by 2, but you end up with the same thing, basically. You're getting rid of the 2. Then you do your trinomial, you factorize it, you get that, and then you've got two answers for y. y is equal to 2 or y is equal to 1. It's a quadratic equation. We're going to get two solutions for y. But because we have two solutions for y, we're going to end up having two solutions for x. Remember my first equation? I rewrote it like this. I did that earlier on. So now to find our x, we take our y, substitute 2, and put it in the place of y. So x is equal to 2 plus 3. So x is equal to 5. Or, so that's my one solution. If y is 2, x is 5. Then we can do it for our second solution for y. So in the place of y, we're going to put 1. So 1 plus 3. So x would then be 4. My second solution over there. So we've got two answers for x and two answers for y. So where do you get your marks? For isolating x, we're making x the subject of the formula. And then we get a mark for substituting over here. Then over here, you get a mark for standard form. You then get a mark for factors over here. Then you get a mark for both your Y's and a mark for both of you. I hope that that was helpful. If you'd like videos that goes over each of these and shows the steps and how to do it, I have that in my playlist below. If you'd like more past paper questions, I also have that in my playlist below. I hope to see you in another video very soon. Subscribe for more. Bye, everyone.